In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn a PDF into Google Slides that your students can then type onto. Um, this is really useful right now as we are turning to digital remote learning. Um, but just a little disclaimer before I begin, check the terms of use of the PDF resource that you are using just to make sure that this is allowed. Um, many people are adjusting their terms of use to be uh, more lenient around this time. So if it's good to go, then this is how you do it. So first of all, I want to take this file, which is a PDF file, and I want to make it so that my students can actually type onto it. Now, what I could do is create, take screenshots of each page in this file, but that would take me a really long time. So I'm instead going to go over to a website called pdf2image.com. And then as you can see, I already started the upload process, but you're going to take your PDF, drag and drop it, and then it will start converting it to individual JPEGs. And from there, once it's converted, you'll see the option to download, and it will download to your computer as a zipped file, and in that file will be all the JPEGs. So in this instance, for this particular PDF, this is going to be 164 JPEGs all in one folder for me. Okay, so let's give that a minute to finish up. In the meantime, you want to get your slides presentation set up. So default, when you open up a Google Slides presentation, it's going to be um, a very long slide because it's, um, in, it's made for presentations. But most of the PDFs that we're going to be working with as teachers are going to be 8.5 by 11 or 11 by 8.5. So you're going to go to File, Page Setup, and then you're going to click Custom. And for mine, it's a vertical PDF, so I'm going to do 8.5 by 11, and I'm going to click Apply. All right, so now I'm going to download this so that I've got the images, and then I will show you how to put an image on each slide. Now, when you just drag and drop an image onto a slide, it's going to be tricky for the students because then they it'll be slippery. They'll be clicking around and they'll accidentally be moving that background image. So what you want to actually do is solidify it, like um, stick it underneath the main layer. And by to do that, you set it as a background instead of just dragging and dropping onto your slide. Okay, so I'm going to open up my images and I will show you how to do that with one of the examples, one of the images. Okay, so my my um, zip file is expanding, and now I have a folder that looks like this with all my images. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put this back on my other screen, and I'm going to click background, choose image, and then from here, instead of going to browse, I'm actually going to just take one of the little thumbnail image thumbnails from this folder and I'm going to drag it and drop it and you'll see it turns blue. And then click done. So I'm going to take these off and see now it's not slippery. It's in the background there. So from here what you want to do, so now that students can type onto it, is get it set up for them with text boxes. So I will actually just cover all of the spaces where students are expected to write with a text box. And you can make it so that it has a white background to actually cover those lines. So I'm going to go up to the paint bucket tool, click on the white color, and then I like to outline it with a color. And then I also like to go to format options and add a little drop shadow so students can see that this is where they're meant to type. You can also do this, but that might get annoying because then they have to start by deleting. Um, and then also before you start getting other slides set up, get your text box formatted, text boxes formatted the way you want them to all be. So like I want Century Gothic and I want like 24 size. Yeah, that works. 
So now what I do as soon as I start making my other slides is I just grab this text box, copy it, and I add it onto my other slides. And I don't have to then like make the background white or outline it again or any of that all over again. Okay, so afterwards to add more slides, click on that arrow, blank, and then you just repeat the process. And then that's it.